Hello everybody, it's Hilal Kudai. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the refractory technique and how to create model for it. There are two different techniques to create metal free restorations many many years ago. Those are the uh, the the most uh, mostly used and they still exist nowadays. The techniques which is called the refractory and platinum foil technique. Also uh, call it feldspatic technique because at that moment, at that time, before I was born actually, uh, the, the only the ceramic uh, on the market was the feldspatic, uh, feldspatic ceramics. It's created out of feldspar. And uh, today we are using also fluorapatite ceramics, which is also very nice. Uh, we, we have very good result on the refractory technique too. Refractory rocks because it's unbeatable and it's a unique material because you can start uh, with different color, different opacity options at the same firing procedure. It's not easy to repeat because uh, you have to take care about your firing cycle and you have to fire again and again and again sometimes because according to your missing part on the tooth uh, natural structure and natural identition you need to fire several times so it's not a uh, easy to repeat and uh, it's not so production friendly it takes time which kind of case we will going to apply the refractory technique is the, for example it's very limited prep surface and a different area of the tooth requires different kind of opacity and different kind of color at uh, the first touch. If I apply the pressable technique on top of this kind of restoration, it wouldn't be fit the surface area. I apply transparent natural. Natural color and natural value level can expose underneath of this material. But at the same time, in here, as you can see, this area needs to be blocked the light because of the black oral cavity. So uh, we have to apply kind of the, the opacious material like a deep dentin or opaque dentin on top. As soon uh, as you apply your ceramic, you are going to realize that the, the, the refractory model absorbs lots of water. For that reason, uh, you have to humidate your model with uh, distilled water uh, by just applying your model inside of the water. If you saw bubbles coming out of your uh, model, you have to wait until it stops. So, um, the, the production uh, information is very important from the refractory uh, material. Oh, the, I don't know which material you would choose for it. Uh, you can buy from Bagel, for example. Those materials are specially created for the refractory technique, which is low, um, low shrinkage uh, capability. So this is the, the first fire, just, is just after the firing. As you can see, the, the surface quality is very nice because I cooked this material in the good condition beans. You have to increase your regular temperature. For example, Emacs cooks on the 750 uh, Celsius, and I increase at the 20 degree more. So the, let's talk about the refractory model because it's uh, this is the important part for the refractory creation. That the main topic is the have to create your refractory model. Sometimes it's called carrot model. Sometimes it's called alveolar model. Sometimes it's called Geller because. Willa Geller was the, the first generation, one of the, let's say, one of the first generation dental technician uh, who used this technique with the kind of his own creation way on the model. So uh, this is the, uh, the, the model. You can apply some gingival mask to achieve nice uh, the insertion direction and uh, you can um, protect the, the, the papilla area because plaster can be broken. So uh, the basically uh, your dye needs to go in and out without any problem, but your dye shouldn't uh, rotate inside of the, the plaster uh, dyes. So for that reason, uh, we create some unrotative part on the on both sides, mesially and distally. And then the, this is the risky part for the plaster models. If you do the, the model out of plaster, the base model, I mean, out of plaster, 
you have to take care of this part because it can be broken while you are removing your dice. So this is the, the pain on the on your neck. Uh, instead of making your antirotative part low, I highly recommend you to make it high because uh, when you do it, uh, the negative side going to be added on the, the the plaster side because we are going to pour the plaster on top of the uh, ditched dice model. So. Um, uh, let's talk about the process. This is the first impression and then uh, this is how I remove the, the impression. When you remove the impression you have to take care about the remainings. Just investigate your model. If there is a silicon pieces on the model you have to remove them gently under the microscope. I highly recommend you to use the microscope. You have to take care of this part by adding some wax on the, the palatal area. I'll show you. Also, uh, when you remove the, uh, the, the, the ditch, the dice uh, out of the, the plaster model, the marginal part can be uh, broken because of the position of the, the papilla on the impression side. It can be collapsed on the, the marginal parts. Just uh, be aware on this situation. Uh, you have to remove it until you achieve the flat surface on the marginal side, just on the gingiva, not on the uh, the tooth surface. You have to do it under the, the microscope. And then, as I said to you, uh, we apply some uh, wax behind the, uh, the tooth to be sure that our model is going to go out from the silicone when we pull with the plaster without any problem, without any damage. So this is uh, my second, uh, the plaster uh, pouring on my uh, first duplication. I marked uh, uh, the, the, the directions on the, the dies because I was going to cut them out because I, I want them to be um, have uh, the parallel uh, directions. Uh, we don't want to have any interference while we are pushing our uh, the dies. So generally I mark the, uh, the surfaces with my long flat surface of my burr and then I start to cut uh, the dice. This is the first copy that I receive out of my uh, the, the cutting. Uh, I call it 0A. 0A is the, the most valuable uh, die. We have to protect this die. Uh, as soon as I uh, create these dies I duplicate them immediately. Uh, for the duplication I'm using uh, Emacs press muffles. It's very useful. Uh, according to the size you can um, uh, duplicate 10 or 12 uh, dies at the same time. And this is the first copy. It's let's call it 1A. I do not recommend you to, uh, to duplicate these uh, dies or I, with the refractory because we need something for cementing. It means cement gap in between the restoration and dies. For that reason, uh, I, I'm going to use 1A to duplicate it again to uh, produce my uh, refractory based uh, dies. So I pour it again uh, the, uh, the third, uh, second time. Uh, my first duplication from my 0A because of uh, the creation of my base model. I'll explain later. The first of all, as, I, as you can see, uh, I duplicate, uh, the, I apply the dice spacer on 1A on the uh, restoration side and on the 2A on the uh, ditched uh, surface side, on the shaft side on the shaft side because I wanted to have a little bit more uh, gap in between my base model and my dies to uh, use these the dies in and out without any problem. Um, again, then I uh, copy my 1A which is already die spacer used on the plaster die. So I duplicate them again to achieve a uh, refractory die which I'm going to apply my ceramic on. Uh, it's already uh, dye spacer material is applied on the surface. 
what happened if I apply dye spacer on my refractory dye? Uh, it's it's going to be burned out in the furnace because of it's not resistant material. So I uh, apply the uh, dye spacer on the 1A and duplicate it again and I pour this uh, duplication with the refractory and you're going to receive nice uh, refractory dyes with dye spacer. So I'm going to uh, the place uh, two A uh, dyes into my um, the silicon index because, as I said to you, it's going to create. It's going to help me to create my base model with the, a little bit the difference. I need some space in between my shaft and my um, the base material to achieve nice in and out insertion uh, without any problem. So for that reason I uh, apply also a very thin coat of wax on the uh, 2A dies. Um, so these dies can be uh, used inside of the uh, silicon index to achieve nice result, nice gap in between my dies. So, um, as you can see, I also isolate my silicon index because I'm going to apply uh, the gingival mask on it. The gingival mask will going to help me to control the interproximal area in a better way. So I like the rigid uh, uh, the silicon mask on the uh, on the plaster model because I can shape it with my burr and I can use it uh, the negative side of my uh, gingival mask for my um, uh, shaping my black triangle area to, to remove this black triangle area. So uh, this is the, the gingival mask. I shape the gingival mask again and uh, put it in place uh, because um, well, think about the negative side of the effect when you place the gingival mask I want it to I want them to hold in place without any uh, movement. It should be uh, the, the, as rigid as possible. For that reason, I create some step in between palatal side and the uh, uh, labial side. Those are the my dies and my silicon um, index. As you can see, I put the plaster inside, and then this is the relation in between my uh, the plaster model and dies. Yeah, the the relation is very nice. It's uh, very very nice. This is the uh, relation that I like to see on my model always and always. So um, you can use this technique if you have a different kind of variation that you need to have on your cases. For example, if you have implant support restoration and uh, the veneer, you can use. Uh, this kind of silicon index with the uh, gingival mask on top. Yep, this mask uh, hold in place without any problem. Basically, everything is fit inside of uh, on the model. So. Can start working on my refractory dies. One thing it's very important how to cook your ceramic on the refractory dies is very important. Basically, you have to increase your temperature at least 20 degree higher. If you put the, your dies on the bottom of your um, uh, the firing cycle muffle, you have to increase maybe uh, 30, maybe 40 degree more to cook the ceramic properly. As you can see on the screen, uh, there is a different uh, veneering. Uh, the, the first wash firing procedure exists. You can use some add-on materials, which means a low fusing ceramic to cook 720. This is another option. Uh, you have to glaze the refractory dye surface first, then you have to apply your ceramic on top because of the protection uh, of the um, 
uh, with the porosity it can be created uh, from the refractory dye material uh, or you can use dentin on the dentin on the surface to just increase 10 degree more um, to achieve more a uh, little bit uh, the, the melted uh, version of your ceramic it's like a, a little bit uh, over glazed version or overcooked version of your ceramic application uh, if you apply a very thin layer of ceramic it's going to help you to protect the restoration while you are cooking on the refractory dye this is also important uh, you have to follow kind of project. The project needs to be created by WhatsApp or my, by mockup or digitally. So then you have to be sure you are going to have less pain on your neck uh, and you are going to create, uh, use your creation as much as possible. Thank you for your attention. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you have any question, just send me an uh, email on hilalkudailab at gmail.com or you can send me uh, the question on my Instagram account which is detail macro uh, hashtag detail macro and or from YouTube take care of yourself stay safe bye